We are going to use that time to plead with our friends and our colleagues and our leaders in the Congress that the time is now. There is no more time. You must pass strong federal voter protection legislation, and you must do it now. You must do it before the August recess. Our democracy is at stake. That's what's on the line. That is why we are here. And now it's my privilege to introduce someone who is a hero to everyone right here, the Dean of the Texas House of Representatives Democratic Caucus, Ms. Sinfronia Thompson from Houston. Ms. Dean! I'm a member of that committee uh, that sat through that marathon hearing some 23 hours and 35 minutes. And all of my constituents' uh, desires were denied. Let me tell you why uh, I left. I left because I am tired of sitting as a hostage in the House of Rep Texas House of Representatives while Republicans strip away the rights of my constituents to vote. We have fought too long and too hard in this country to get away from having to count beans in a bag, having to count bubbles in a soap. And we have achieved the full right to vote in this country. And when President Johnson signed the Civil Rights Bill in 1965, I thought that that would put to rest forever anyone's desire to strip away the right for anyone to vote. When I look at the fact that we go to Iraq to fight a war and give those persons the right to vote over there, and yet in our own homeland we have citizens who are a part of this country, the fabric of this country, we want to strip away their rights. And that is the reason why that we are refusing to be allowed to remain Republican hostages in the Texas House of Representatives. Please allow me to introduce my colleague, Trey Martinez Fisher from Bear County. Yay. Yay. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. Uh, I am Trey Martinez Fisher from San Antonio, Texas. Uh, being around Chairwoman Thompson, you learn something every day. As a member of the committee, she heard a lot and saw a lot. We can talk about the proposal that we walked away from to defend democracy. Ms. Thompson reminded me of a time when you could show up to vote and you went into a booth, you can close a curtain, and you could vote in privacy. Yes. Under the provisions of this bill, you could literally have a voter walk through a polling place, be greeted by the Proud Boys, and they can stand over your shoulder and watch you vote close enough to listen if you were to whisper something to yourself or close enough to see how you were casting your votes. That's the environment we're talking about. There is nothing special about this special session this is a suppression session. This is a session to suppress our voting rights. And every man and woman standing here and those Democrats that we know that are safe and secure in other states, we're not going to put up with that. Right. Democracy is on the line. The eyes of the nation are on Texas. And we came here a few weeks ago with about 20 men and women to make our case to the U.S. Senate. This time we brought a little reinforcements. Yeah, yeah, right. We have courage, conviction, and a little bit of defiance. And we are here today to rally the nation, and we hope that the U.S. Senate will hear us. And we hope that they will hear us and they will act to pass the For the People Act before the August 6th recess. We can see what's happening in this country. We know Leader Schumer has laid out a very ambitious agenda before the August 6th recess, and we want voting rights to be on that agenda. Right, right. We want to vote up yeah. or down. We want to know who you are. Yeah, yeah. And are you with us? We will be on the Hill this week. We are going to be working hard. This is a working trip. Everybody here is committed to doing it. And before this gets lost in the discussion, you need to understand we are citizen lawmakers. We don't get professional salaries. 
or husbands, or wives, or single parents. We have businesses, or we're somebody's employee. Understand the amount of emotion that is going on with us, not just on this politics, not just on the governor uh, incidentally referring to us as, I guess, animal or property to say that he will corral us and he will cabin us in the Capitol to get this agenda. Understand the emotion of everybody up here and what we're leaving on the table with our families and our personal lives, but that's how important our democracy is. And that's why we were here and we're here to bring our message. And so at this time, I'm happy to bring up uh, to this podium the chairwoman of the Texas Legislative Black Caucus, my friend, Representative Nicole Collier, chairman from Fort Worth, Texas. Thank you. We are here today. My, my name is Nicole Collier. I'm from Fort Worth, Texas. And we're here today because our backs have been against the wall. We had no other option. There was nothing left to give. And so we took a stand and we left the state of Texas because that was the best and the right thing to do at the right time. And let me tell you this, who decided that one constitutional right deserved greater deference than the other? I'll tell you who, that's Texas. Texas, the Republican legislature decided that your right to carry a gun was more important than your precious right to vote. Yeah. We don't believe that one constitutional right deserves greater deference than the other. They're no greater than the all. They all deserve equal consideration and equal protection. And so we came today because we know that the Texas legislature, the Republican-led legislature, they're not trying to make these elections fair or free. It is not fair to require people to jump through hoops and fill out multiple forms just to vote. We're not free when people can be criminalized like Hervis Rogers for simple mistakes. We're not free when you promote the rights of partisan poll watchers over the rights of others. So we're not going to take it. We had the courage to take a stand in Congress. We need you to finish it. I want to introduce my colleague and friend, the Speaker Pro Tem of the Texas Legislature, Representative Joe Moody from El Paso. Uh, Joe Moody from El Paso. If you couldn't tell. The, the voter suppression going on in Texas is just the tip of the iceberg. The clock is literally ticking on Congress to act to protect voters in Texas and all across the country. We put everything on the line. The entire legislative branch of the Texas government has been zeroed out. Our budget has been zeroed out in an act of tyranny because we refused to pass a bill like they wanted to force through. A toxic piece of legislation. Now, lives of thousands of Texas public servants and the freedoms of millions of Texas voters are on the line. Now, I know this. We're here to fight. We just hope we're not alone. Because democracy itself sits at one minute to midnight. And we need immediate federal action to turn back the clock. Thank you. So, uh, members of the, of the press, we, we are planning a, a full press conference tomorrow morning. Uh, where we'll visit with you more then we'll take three questions right now. Chris, okay, question for you. You said that you want to see this For the People Act passed at the federal level. That is how to vote. All Democrats voted to advance that debate. What has changed? What are you guys going to say here now in D.C. to try to change minds? Sure. So, so what, what has changed is, is Texas is now in a special session uh, to, again, uh, pass uh, an extreme anti-voter measure. It's going to make it more difficult for people to vote. And so we want to use this extreme example of what Greg Abbott and Republicans in Texas are doing to uh, implore the Democratic senators to do what it takes to get the bill passed. And obviously that's a conversation about the filibuster, and uh, I, I don't really care how they do it, but 
The reality is uh, there, there are carve outs on the filibuster in the U.S. Senate on different issues. We believe there's no more important issue than the right to vote for all American citizens to be able to cast a ballot. And we are going to we are going to communicate that to senators on Capitol Hill and, and, and to, to the American people more broadly. That that is why we are doing this, and they have to act now. Chris, and I'll keep with CBS. Um, to constituents who elected you to do a job, to be in Austin and debate these issues, and they see you leaving the state today, and may think they're running away from their responsibilities. Nothing, nothing could be further from the truth. We are, we are doing our job. We were elected to represent our constituents and fight for our constituents' interests, and that is why we are here. Because we're not going to sit in, the Austin, in, in Austin, in the House chamber, and watch the Republican majority steamroll the voting rights of our constituents. We're fighting back. We're leaving, so they can't do that. And we are using our collective voice to deliver a message to the Congress. We are fighting for our constituents. How long will you be here? Well, our, our intention is to be out of Texas until this session is over. And if he calls another one right away? That, that's our message to Congress. We need them to act now because they will keep calling these, these sessions to pass voter suppression legislation. Kurt. So we need we need Congress to act now. We've got about three weeks uh, until this session is over. That The clock is ticking. they got to act before the August recess. Last question, Chris, 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 NBC. Right here, right here. NBC, NBC News, Lauren Egan. President Biden is expected to talk about voting rights tomorrow. Would anything less than a call to abolish the filibuster be viewed as a disappointment from you all? I think that I, I think the pre, I'm glad the president is is delivering the speech tomorrow. I'm looking forward to, to listening to it. And uh, what, what I hope the president is going to say is that he expects the Congress to do what it takes to pass federal voting rights legislation before the people act and the John Lewis Voting Rights Act, which is critically important for us in Texas to have both. So I'm looking forward to the president's words tomorrow. We'll visit with y'all tomorrow. Chris, tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you. With, with we shall Sinema. overcome. Yeah. We, we shall overcome. overcome. Chris, do you guys have any meetings with Senator Cinema arranged? Thank you, guys. Uh, we shall